Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of Leadership for the Now. My name is Florian Lungo, and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And today I'm joined by my teaching partner, Alena Ipanova. Welcome, Alena. Hello, Florian. Thank you so much for welcoming. Nice to be with you here today. Absolutely. And today we have an exciting topic, isn't it? Yes, we are going to talk about coaching and how to use coaching in leadership. Yeah, right? absolutely. I'm excited. So, me too. <laughs> and Florin, I think to, to, to kickstart this uh, discussion and sharing, I would uh, suggest to define what coaching is because we see this word used everywhere. And um, every time when I talk to people, they seem to have a very different understanding of what coaching is. So we, we have to get to the uh, specific terms. Uh, what is it that we are actually talking about? So let's create this framework. And I wonder if you could share uh, what coaching is and how it is different from um, all other forms like mentoring, counseling, uh, training, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great question because I also see this misrepresentation of coaching and it's just because of lack of awareness. And, and we have created these kind of coaching titles uh, and we use them, I'll say, wrongly. Because the best way we can um, define coaching is to compare with mentoring and training. These are three forms of developing ourselves, getting better results as an individual or as an organization. The difference between them is that, for example, when it comes to training, like we both train and, and we facilitate. So when you train and facilitate, what you're actually doing, we're, we're sharing information and we're sharing information that is sometimes based on research, is based on principles. So we're giving tools to people. And if we make those trainings interactive and we, we actually have this uh, experiential, you know, exercise for them, you know, they also taste a little bit and, and they, they try a little bit of that training, but it's still the trainer passing on information and helping the trainee to grasp a principle that will help them get better results or whatever it is that the purpose of the training is. So that mm -hmm. that's training, the trainer passing on information. Uh, teaching is, is the same, like in universities, the teacher will pass on information you know, to the students in the hope that the student will be able to access that information when they need it in the future, right? Like preparing mm -hmm. us for a future situation. Then, then we have mentoring. And in mentoring, we have someone that, um, so for example, in teaching and training, the teacher and the trainer usually has more knowledge. And, and, and the problem with that is that it's a little bit more theoretical knowledge. So the teacher, the trainer has theoretical knowledge about the subject, pass it on, might not have the experience to going through that um, journey themselves. The mentor, mentor has the experience. So they have gained the practical knowledge by going through the same journey we want to be on. So for example, if we want to get a better you know, public speaker, you know, I have a mentor that is a better public speaker. They have the results that I want and I'm looking up to them and, and I want to model their, uh, you know, their strategies, their systems. So they will mentor me by sharing their experience. So they have mm -hmm. practical experience in the subject. And they usually should be, so a mentor should be more, you know, ahead of you on the journey you want to be on, right? And we have to be very careful because a mentor might not be the right person in multiple areas of our lives. So if I have someone as being my mentor for public speaking, if I have a question about, let's say, leadership or about my personal life, then I might not want to go to the same person. So it, it, mm -hmm. we could have mentors in different areas of our lives because they are ahead of us in those specific areas. And then there's mm -hmm. coaching. Now, these two or three that we discussed, training, mentoring, and, and uh, teaching, the person passes on information and that might be from practical experience or from theoretical experience coaching what is different with coaching is that coaching does not assume that the individual is like an empty vessel and then we put in information coaching assumes that the individual has already the answers inside of them and uses questions 
you know, really powerful crafted questions to help the individual come up with their own answers. And in my mm -hmm. practice, I kind of do uh, a mix of mentoring and coaching because I work with people and I work and I, and I coach executives and I learn things in those interactions that I might share with someone. I might give them a shortcut. But coaching is the practice of helping someone become aware of their answers, helping them choosing their own answers, their own way, not necessarily my way. A mentor might share, this is how I've done it, but it doesn't mean that it will work for you. So did I, did I give you some clarity there? Like, does yeah, it Yeah, yeah. I would actually, um, I would add to that as well, that um, they, we perceive then in coaching, we perceive people as masters of their life. As you mentioned, they know the answers. They know their life better than we do as coaches, right? So they also uh, get to know themselves much better during the period of life. And uh, the job of a coach, I would say, is to unlock that internal potential uh, so that you can actually generate some powerful realizations, some insights, and also design your own action steps. Um, as in mentoring, I have mentors as well, and then I get some directives on what to do and how to do in which way, and I willingly follow because I believe in that. Uh, but then in coaching, I get to design my actions. I get to think about what can I actually do to keep myself accountable. Uh, and it gives a huge empowerment, I would say. So definitely Absolutely. coaching is uh, something very, very powerful and valuable. And, uh, you know, Florin, now I see more leaders getting interested in that and developing coaching competences and integrating them into their personal leadership style. So uh, when we look at this from that perspective, um, how leaders can develop and evolve in their coaching skills. Um, what are the challenges that you see in your practice? As I know that you coach executives and uh, individuals, regardless of their positions. Yeah. Uh, so what are those challenges that they face uh, in terms of coaching, how to develop their coaching competences and uh, how useful they are in their practice? Yeah, absolutely. So arguably coaching is the, only way to bring about transformation and change the reason being because if i share with you my idea there is a there is a tendency for us to you know dismiss that idea or find ways or motives why that idea might not work you say oh florin that worked for you because of this and that and and because of my background because if you're a male because you come from romania because whatever that is right but when it's your idea, like if instead of me sharing my idea, I'm helping you come up with your idea. OK, so these are some options like which one right? would you want to try? Which one would it work for you? And whenever we are actually with mentoring, the other person, the mentee, sometimes might have more of a defensive position, because if I'm saying, you know, Elena, this is how I'm doing it and they say, if you're not able to do that, or if you believe that's not going to work for you, you're trying to defend your position. But in coaching, then I'm not telling you how to do it. I'm mm -hmm. helping you, you know, bring about your own solution. And because it's your solution, it's your idea, it's your step, then you're more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to that's add that when, you, right? That, that's the power, right? Because Mm -hmm. If you think about whatever organizations want to do, like what they want to do is to change some of their current habits. Like we have a culture, we have a way of doing things, and this gives us these results. If we have, if we want better results, then we need to change something in the day-to-day -day habits, the things that we're doing. And the way to change that is to have a coaching conversation with your employees to help them think about, become aware of how we do things, why we do things, and if there are better ways to do those things, and then empower them and encourage them to try some of those small changes. But when the idea comes from there, there's ownership mm -hmm. in that idea. It's much more likely for them to implement the idea. 
compared to when it comes from the manager and the leader. So I think this is just, again, to re reiterate the power of coaching. And now to get to your question, like what stops leaders from, from you know, developing coaching skills or in integrating, you know, coaching in their, in their um, leadership style? I think the first thing, it's time constraints. Right? In order for mm. you to first develop your coaching skills and then create a coaching culture, you know, this takes time. It's, it's a long-term goal. Uh, I, I give an example where I was in the engineering world. One of my, um, my, my teammates came to me and said, Florian, I applied this procedure that you wrote. It doesn't seem to be working. And I knew the answer. And instead of me giving them the answer, I, I invited them to think into, you know, why that might be. And, and if you're looking back at page, whatever page was in the procedure, you know, how was your result compared to that? It would have taken me 15 seconds to give the answer. It would have, it, it took me 10 or 15 minutes to discuss the procedure, help them think mm -hmm. by themselves. And next time when they face the same challenge, so they know how to tackle it. And I think this is a constraint for leaders. Like they feel like we need to deliver this result right now. I don't have the time mm -hmm. to go into coaching mode right now, right? So, so that, that's definitely a constraint. It's a very good example. And actually, as you're sharing the example of um, how coaching can be implemented or in which form it can be implemented, uh, I think maybe we give some more context to, to it as well, because it could be any, um, any feedback session, it could be developmental conversation, uh, it could be conversation about personal goals, how you actually set goals that they are in alignment with how the individual sees themselves in developing, evolving in a certain position, or maybe uh, how they project their career development as well. Um, and it incredibly impacts the levels of engagement, the levels of motivation. So the better questions you ask, uh, the better the result is. And as you mentioned, powerful questions, active listening. Um, I would also add being present in the moment and just sensing the environment so it's not like a separate conversation that we need to book for it to be a coaching conversation no. but it's uh, our communication uh, which uh, which should be different uh, not just based on task uh, tasks that we have to accomplish but also on that uh, personal development aspect uh, this yeah. is something that i would add to to your example as well uh, absolutely. And, and I think the other uh, challenge for leaders is that the, there is a lack of, um, of coaching training and, and skill development. In other words, very few organizations invest into a coaching program for their leaders. I'm not talking about them uh, getting a certification, right? So one thing is mm -hmm. for you to, you know, uh, like, like myself, for example, go and license yourself and certify to be a, a, a coach, right? A professional coach. What I'm talking about is to know how to use coaching principles, how to ask good questions in, in the setup, you know, in the work setup. And we have a training, you know, it's called coaching for managers. But this is not one of the, you know, the highest demanded trainings. People usually ask mm -hmm. for uh, sales training, right? Communication training, leadership training, but, but things that they see a link between the training and the results. And I think that's also another challenge that they, if, if you think short term as an organization, you might not see the benefits of investing in your people to become a better, better coach because this is a long term investment. Like for someone to move away from giving directions to asking questions and, and having a coaching approach it takes time. I know for myself, like I was a very directive type of team leader, but then I got introduced to coaching and then I follow a coaching certification. And then naturally, because of my, uh, me coaching clients, it, it just overflew in all of other areas of my life where I started to ask mm. more questions rather than giving me instructions. So I think you're making a really good point because leaders, that 
have a coaching mindset. It doesn't mean like you said that, that you have a, a, a coaching session or I book a coaching call or I book a coaching meeting with my team. Is that my first reaction when there is a challenge is asking questions rather than giving the answers. I think that's the biggest, if we can see a mind shift in, in leaders, how would this show up at work? Is that they're gonna ask more questions empowering the individuals to find the answers, to come up with ideas, to be part of the solution, rather than being, you know, the solution being imposed on them. Mm -hmm. and, and you can think about, you know, the benefits of that in terms of engagement and retention, right? And Florin, I would like, I, I would like us to go actually a little bit deeper to that because um, we, I hear from you saying about the questions uh, mm -hmm. asking questions and I think that it's important to give a taste what it's like because I might ask questions but uh, here it's uh, more important how you ask rather than what you ask how you ask in terms of uh, which words you use uh, the tone and everything how you take into account the context uh, maybe we could share some examples of you know, do's and don'ts in the sense. So if you place this, uh, place it in this area, because there is a huge difference in how you actually ask questions. Uh, so let's uh, let's play along. Uh, yeah, what could so, be some of the what could be some of the questions um, that we can really demonstrate that this is how you really unlock this internal potential? Yeah, I think the challenge with with that question is that um, and and. There are coaching questions that you can you can Google them and you can find a list of. The challenge with that is that um, at its purest form, coaching, it's, it's actually being in the moment, active listening. And when you do that, your intuition and, and your experience will help you come up with the right question. So I, I do not suggest you getting there prepared with a set of questions, right? I will not advise that because you have to really, if you really listen, if you really are focused on the individual you're speaking with, then you're going to come up with those questions. And in what I will suggest to you is that we role play a little bit and maybe you, you play the coachy role and then maybe you come with a question. Let's see how that goes. And let's see if we can give some demonstration of how how this will, will work, you know, in, in practice. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Uh, this is what I mean exactly, because I want to um, yeah. show a taste. These questions might come to leaders, mm -hmm. but you have to be intentional about that. You have to train this ability as well. And um, yeah, let's let's try. <laughs> let's right. do it. Okay. So what would be, you know, a, a common question or challenge that you, for example, when you work with with individuals, like one of their challenges or one of their questions that they might have, so we can actually work with that. Yeah, so um, leaders, um, leaders that I recently talked to, for mm -hmm. example, um, they were concerned about um, how they work with diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And um, their concerns were if they are on the right path, basically, because mm -hmm. they um, achieved gender um, gender equality uh, in terms of 50-50 at their workplace, but still there are some issues. Right. Okay. So let's say that's that's you're a leader that comes to our coaching session with, with that, right? And, mm. and I'll say, Elena, can you help me get a little bit more context? What do you mean, like, you being on the right path? Oh, this is a very good question. So we want to make sure that um, now I need to step into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So yeah, so uh, we we want to make sure that um, everything that we do actually creates meaning and value for people. That's why it's important to us that to be on the right path, so that it's not only a physical representation of numbers, but actually people feel changes in the social environment, in the corporate environment. Right. So, so you mentioned that um, the actions that you're doing, you want them to create meaning and value for people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so now with that in mind and looking at what you've done up until now, you know, how much of what you've done is actually bringing meaning and value to people? 
So uh, in the survey, people shared that it's, uh, it creates value for them uh, to have a representation and to have equal access to resources and payments, uh, salaries that are equal. Uh, so it's already valuable. Good. So, so what I'm hearing is that some of the things that you have done and you have in place, it's bringing that value that you're looking for for your for the, the people, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so then I'm wondering, where is that concern that you had in the beginning that I'm not sure if we are on the right path? Where is that coming from? Is there anything so in else? This, in this context, that it's coming from the fact that um, certain uh, people in our organization don't feel that they are in, fully included. So that uh, inclusion is one of the missing bricks uh, here. Right. So if I would sit with one of those individuals that do not feel included and i would ask them about their feelings like what would you say they will say to me what would you think they will say to me probably um probably nothing in relation to that so um i mean i'm also kind of not to say that i have this uh, uh diversity inclusion uh, hat on me because it's uh it's a two-side process in terms of willingness. Do I want to be included or not? Uh, it's, um, it, it should come from both sides. Uh, so basically for, for the conversation again, we can use it again as an example. If you are a leader and you talk to someone who doesn't feel included, what kind of questions might you ask? Uh, what, how can you empower the person, encourage the person to uh, really um, make a step forward. Yeah, absolutely. And and if I would be a leader and sitting with someone that now the, the what I want to be aware of is what makes us think they're not they don't feel included, right? And and I don't want to make any assumptions. So I would start with you know you know tell me how do you feel, right? I will not make the assumption unless mm -hmm. I know exactly that they they say that and and then let's say. They will, they will say, well, I, I don't feel included. And I will ask, what do you mean by that? Can you help me get some clarity on mm. what do you mean But I don't feel included? And hopefully they will come with some examples that will be, you know, more practical. And, and if they're not, we're going to want to ask, you know, okay, so can you give me a situation where, where you've been through and, and it made you not feel included? And then we're mm. going to go deeper and, and coach the person in that situation to understand, is it an individual case that they had an experience with someone? And based on that experience, they reach to the conclusion that I don't feel included. And they that's kind of how they feel with everyone else. Or or is it like, where is that coming from? And, and what do you mean by included? Mm. Right? This is so, a very, so, good, uh, very good question to actually check in instead of assuming, uh, but asking for the individual interpretation of things. And, you know, Florin, I think that we can also relate it to any performance conversation, to absolutely. any developmental conversation, when rather than using some kind of parameters that you have on your list, you actually ask, okay, how is it going with your goals? and um how do you how do you see yourself and you can even ask to um ask people to evaluate themselves on the scale from one to ten for instance and elaborate on the number like oh, okay you gave yourself five uh what does it mean to you okay what brought you to five what what are those things that you've done that actually helped helped you to get to five uh, and this could be the also the examples of uh, questions Absolutely. that leaders could use and these are coaching questions something that is more um centered to internal perception instead of us running on our assumptions yeah absolutely and and yeah of course those will work perfectly and and just that sometimes the answers we get from the coachee do not match one of the kind of the 
the prepared questions we had or the ways we want to go about the conversation. And that's where if you really have a coaching mindset, then you're gonna you're not gonna be attached to how you wanted this conversation to go. Because because many times I think the challenge with, with leaders, because there is a difference between someone hiring me to coach them and me coaching some of my team members. The difference is that if you hire me, my sole purpose and my sole goal is for you to get what you want. That I'm serving you. But if I'm your leader, sometimes you know there might be a conflict between what I want, what the organization needs, and what you need and want. And that's why as, as a leader, we will at some point hit a limit where we cannot really, let's say someone wants to, they're unhappy, they want to quit their job, right? If I would be coaching them, of course, I will be coaching them into finding what's the best way forward for them. But if I'm their leader, I might not want to go and coach them to find another job somewhere else, right? Because that might be... Why not? Why well, not? Well, well, <laughs> well, you know, it, it will be because of all of the things that, because it will give me work. I will need to replace the person. I will need to find someone else. I will need to train. I will need. I will have a. I will need to do work un until you know someone else picks up the work. And I'm not saying oh, it. This is uh, this is interesting because I would say that um, in this perspective, the leader who sees that um, if I'm a leader and I see that my um, team member can't really is not thriving here. And if I'm sure that I enabled all my resources to help, but it just simply doesn't work, then um, I can actually um, help this person to get another job. And maybe even through my network, and at least in my, in my perception, um, not just to say for karma, but it's just, uh, it's, it feels better to assure that this person performs somewhere else, it creates loyalty, it creates integrity, rather than keeping the person because I don't have, um, I, I can't fill in the resources and we need someone working with these issues right now. Uh, so I think um, maybe it's a different topic for discussion, but it's interesting to me. I think it's also a, a kind of involvement in your leadership when you are not scared of losing a person, but you are more driven by the higher purpose and um, I witnessed that even between departments in uh, one organization where they wouldn't share their resources uh, even though um, one person could strive much better in another department and leaders fought for that yeah. and the concern was not about the person but about you know resources and how to keep business running uh, so uh, yeah. Coaching I, actually can play a role here as well. Uh, absolutely. And, and what I was trying to say is that as a leader coaching your team, you might not be able to be, you know, uh, to serve them at their best because you have also an interest, like you have some skin in the game, right? If you know that you have a goal that you want to reach or, or a project that, that your job security as a leader depends on, you might not be so open and, and mm. you know, willing to coach the person you know, out of the organization. Ideally, that's what you should be doing. I just want to make people aware that when you hire a, an impartial and objective coach, they will help you get your answer. And sometimes your answer might not be what you want to hear. Mm. And, and, and maybe that's the leader that I want to hear that this person doesn't try, right? And so what I'm saying is that if you have, because you have, shares you have skin in that game you might not be able to coach the person you know at the highest level i think that that's mm -hmm. what i but but as a leader i completely agree with you you should want the best of your for your people and of your people and you should help them you know get whatever it is that they want even if that means leaving the organization mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that that's the the highest goal for leaders but sometimes yeah. We might be in circumstances and situations where we we might choose a, a short term, you know, result based, uh, you know, over the long term kind of relationship with that person because that that's what we'll what we'll do. So I think that I just wanted to make people aware 
that if you are involved in the business in the, in the organization it will be much harder for you to be an impartial objective coach and and, and mm -hmm. I, I want to make a distinction between you having someone like us which is from outside we don't have an interest in, in necessarily one way or the other but we can help you more objectively than someone that is in the organization mm. Yeah, that's true. Uh, still, it's worth definitely developing your coaching competences. Absolutely. Just the, the ability to ask powerful questions, the ability to listen actively. And uh, yeah, what you're talking about, I can relate to that, Florin. It's about neutrality, like being neutral. And when there is a conflict of interest, it might be hard. Uh, but then we can still uh, encourage leaders to do the, that bare minimum. How do you lead your conversation? How do you empower? And um, I have uh, one example, actually, of one of the leaders who realized how uh, he's been having conversations with uh, male and female in his organizations, uh, in his organization in a different way, even though his intention was very positive. So speaking with um, male uh, colleagues uh, in this developmental conversation, he would always encourage them to take more risks, to take on new challenges, like, okay, what do you need to, to take on this challenge? What kind of support you need and things like that. So they would climb the ladder quite fast. And then when he talked with um, female colleagues, his concern was to assure him that they feel included, that they feel safe. So his questions were more about, um, how do you feel? Do you feel safe? Uh, what do you what do you need to feel included and, and things like that so it was like no questions about drive and career and achievements uh, taking risk and so on as soon as he realized that and started asking questions in a different manner they got mm -hmm. more women in leadership positions uh, in the company so just shifting that this is the power of coaching the power of asking questions that you can actually transform as you said in the beginning that coaching has this transformational power and um, every leader needs to develop that i'm 100 percent sure in that yeah absolutely so, so that came out in in your coaching conversation with the leader right so so he became aware of that behavior when talking to you or or with a coach right yes yeah, when, yeah. When talking to another coach, to, to yeah. my colleague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that's the power of, of coaching. And and for example, what strikes me is that if you ask people, you know, what all high performance athletes have in common, most people will be quick to tell you that they all work with at least one coach or multiple mm. coaches. They will have a physical coach. They will have a mindset coach. They will have a game coach but as leaders you know uh, and many times our lives depend on the results of that organization of our organization of our businesses you know as leaders we don't see the need in working with a coach we don't see the need in investing in, in coaching for ourselves and when when organizations see that and i have an example an, an organization called Alva Labs. They they work with assessments and recruiting for tech organizations, and and I interview their HR manager. Um, what's her name? Uh, it just escaped me right now. I just have to check. Linnea Bival. So I I interview Linnea on one of our shows, and she shared that um, you know their CEO Malcolm has experienced coaching. And after experiencing coaching for a few months, then he saw the results in his own development. And what they've done, they implemented coaching at all levels, a coaching program for all employees that they have coaching conversation and not necessarily with their managers, right? So the HR department, the people and culture department act as also coaches for individuals, right? So they are more impartial. The leaders get, of course, coaching training, right? To be able to, to coach their individual, their, their team better. But also they have someone which is not necessarily involved directly in the business. Could be, that could be, you know, a coaching partner. So examples like that, you know, are, are not many. But when organizations see the value in coaching and they invest in coaching training, 
And when leaders start working with a coach, many times that should be an impersonal pe person, you know, results, I mean, results are huge. Um, just, just a few weeks ago, I was coaching someone, um, you know, a, 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 high, a high executive, a high level executive. They were sharing with me that they were spending time, you know, it just started with, you know, I have a challenge with time management. I said, well, okay, you know, how is that manifesting for you? Like, what do you see? And and, and they share with me that, well, I'm, I tend to spend time, this person worked in sales, he was a sales director, and and, and he shared that uh, I tend to spend time in, in the workshop and, and in the R&D department. And, and I'm, I'm not sure why. So when we went deeper, it's he wanted to get involved in the in the decisions he wanted to have you know his input in the r d um, decisions but that was not his role and through the power of coaching he became aware that he is not that he didn't trust the team he trusted the team but because he was in sales he wanted to be involved into the product development to be able to have the confidence that this is actually top-notch product so i have the confidence to sell it but we don't know how the people perceived him min mm. mingling or, or meddling in, in the R&D. We know that probably they, they saw it as a lack of confidence in that. So just through some coaching questions, and in one of our sessions, he become aware of how he was spending his time. And just by making that change, right, he saved, you know, hours of his time. And think about the return on investment on that. So just a simple example of how coaching could be very transformational. You just need a mindset shift, things that seem to be so obvious for someone from the outside, but might not be so obvious for us when we are in the picture. You know, there is this saying mm -hmm. that you cannot see the, the, the picture when you're in the frame. That's kind of what a coach will help you do, will help you kind of step out of the frame and look at the picture. And then everything becomes very clear to you. That sounds great. I think it's a perfect metaphor to wrap up uh, our today's uh, conversation, actually, because uh, so we, we need to work on our time management. <laughs> Absolutely. We, yeah, we do. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you, especially about this, uh, the topic of coaching, uh, Florin. And thank you so much for sharing your example. Thank you so much for for being a great teaching partner and and uh, you know asking really good questions. So yeah, thank you so much. All right, thank you for tuning in today. We'll look forward to see you on the next episode. Take care. Speak soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.